Storytelling with toddlers is more than just fun. It's also a powerful way to boost memory, language, and emotional skills. It's a great way to get toddlers started with the family storytelling tradition. Today, I want to talk about this process using pointers provided by a leading authority and with an example from real life. Our example has to do with the potty house, or as we call it in present day, the necessary house. It blew over in a storm. I'm enjoying the weather on a holiday weekend. There's no storms here. It's been pretty good weather for reading and going to the fair. While I was at the fair, my youngest granddaughter called to wish me a happy birthday. I think she was supposed to sing to me, but she's just at that age where she has a reasonable vocabulary, but the words come out when they come out, not because grandma's face is on the phone. According to Elaine Reese, Ph.D., my granddaughter may be just about the right age to start telling little family stories. Reese's research focuses on the development of children's autobiographical memory, language, and literacy. I've been reading her book titled, Tell Me a Story, Sharing Stories to Enrich Your Child's World. Now, throughout this video, I'm going to talk about what she says in the book. So to keep things smooth, I'm not going to repeat Reese's or According to Reese over and over again. These early stories won't be full-blown stories with a beginning, a middle, and an end. In fact, you'll probably be telling most of the story yourself, but they will have a main character, which is usually the child, and a plot, some sort of action, and a point. And the point is often to express an emotion, and many times that emotion will be a negative emotion, such as they're hurt or they're scared. Let me play you an example. This is from an old reel-to-reel tape my cousin Joe found. If you haven't seen one of these, a reel-to-reel tape is like a giant version of an old cassette tape. It has two big circular reels with a strip of tape that moves between them to record and play sounds. Joe got these digitized and we've just been having the best time listening to what is on these files. It would seem that her mother and my mother each had one of these reel-to-reel tape recorders, and they would tape messages to each other and then send them off in the mail. That's right. Now, as I mentioned, they had an outhouse. This was temporary, but probably not quite as temporary as they would have preferred. What what made it fall down? No. What happened the other night? No. The wind blew, remember? Uh Uh-huh. And you were scared. Uh Oh. So what happened? No. It blew something over. What did it blow over? No. The potty house. Uh Uh-huh. And who fixed it? No. Yes, you know. Come and die in Gagra. Just Daddy put it right back up, didn't he? I am going to guesstimate that this is early 1951. In fact, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it's describing an event that happened on January 15, 1951, because I put on my detective hat and I went scouting around on the Internet, which told me that there was a lot of wind on that day. 70 miles per hour gusts, and it seems like that would be enough to blow over an outhouse. What do you think? In this example, my aunt is engaging my cousin in a form of interactive storytelling. Reese calls this rich reminiscing. I'd like to start by defining some of the key things that Reese outlines for collaborating with the toddler to construct a story. These may seem really simple, but they can make a big difference in how a child engages with storytelling. Number one, use open-ended questions. These are questions that can't be answered with a simple yes and no, and they often start with WH, like who, why, and where. There's one exception. For now, your toddler is probably not ready for questions that start with when, because time frames are hard for them to deal with. Number two, use elaborative questions. These are similar to open-ended questions, but they go a step further. They add more information to help expand the child's story. It's not a good idea to repeat a question word for word over and over again. That's a real turnoff for many kids. It's much better to repeat a question by adding more information to it. Number three, it's also important to pause after questions to give the child time to think and respond. And pause a little longer than you actually think makes sense because they need time to process. Number four, Whenever the child does respond, it's also important to confirm and praise. So you want to acknowledge and appreciate the child's contribution to the story. Number five, 
Another concept is called extending. This is where you build on what the child has said by asking follow-up questions or making follow-up statements that helps them keep moving with the story. And then number six, this last concept is something that Reese calls following in. And what she means is that if the child changes the subject mid-story, just go with it. We've turned the page. We're on a new subject. Okay. <laughs> you can tell when a child is ready to start with these little stories by the fact that she begins mentioning past experiences spontaneously in her speech and using personal pronouns such as me, my, and mine. And when toddlers first start telling these little stories, it might be with just one or two words or a mixture of words and pointing at things. You heard that, didn't you? Uh -huh. <laughs> that was funny, wasn't it? Uh -huh. I don't think my aunt realized back in 1951 that she was making a demo tape for Reese's book, but if you listen closely, she's following so many of these guidelines. It's a pie up. What happened to it? She pauses to allow Kathleen to think and voice what she's trying to say. Then she asks an open-ended question. A flat down. What, what made it fall down? That's an elaborative question, asking for more detail to help expand the story. Nah. What happened the other night? An elaborative question. Nah. The wind blew, remember? She's extending, adding information to help Kathleen recall the event. Uh-huh. And you were scared. Extending again. And she's adding emotional context. Remember what Reese says. These stories have a main character. That's Kathleen. They have action. That's the wind blowing the potty house down. And they have a point, which is often a negative emotion. And in this case, the point is that Kathleen was scared. Oh, um, so what happened? There's another open-ended question. No, it blew something over. What did it blow over? She extends and then asks another open-ended question. No. The potty house. She extends again. Uh-huh. And who fixed it? Another open-ended question that encourages Kathleen to recall the people in the story. No. Yes, you know. This is confirming and praising. Come and dine. Gra -gra. Just daddy put it right back up, didn't he? Here, she gently provides accurate details, but she makes it sound like they're just remembering together. It's just like, oh, you know what? I think it was just Daddy that just put it right back up himself, don't you think? In doing this, she implies that there's no reason to be afraid anymore because Daddy fixes things. So my aunt skillfully uses a mix of open-ended and elaborative questions. She pauses, she extends Kathleen's responses, and she confirms her contributions to build the story. I mean, come on, she's hired. <laughs> When I listened to this recording, I realized from last spring, I have another recording of this same cousin 73 years later, and we are talking about the same outhouse. I think the house was built on the site of the shack. It had to be handy for a trail to run back to the necessary house. And the necessary house was situated where? The necessary house was north and a little bit west of the shop. The tar paper shack is where Grandma and Grandpa lived. You can see Kathleen's progression from that tiny storyteller in training to adult storyteller. She started learning from a master storyteller, her mother, way back when her favorite word was... Nah. If there's a child in your life and you want to practice the fine art of rich reminiscing, just remember these basic guidelines. Watch for the child to be ready by noticing when he begins to mention past events spontaneously in his speech. If he turns away or doesn't seem interested, then don't push it. Just wait a while and then bring it up again some other time. Once he seems ready, start bringing up past events once or twice a day. Follow the key concepts I mentioned earlier. Ask open-ended elaborative questions. Pause. Confirm and praise. Extend what he says and follow up questions. And if he changes the topic, just go with the flow. And keep it short, but see if you can collaborate to create tiny but complete stories. Happy story time. Go forth and create memories together. Oh, hey, also, check the comments attached to this video or the end cards in the corner of your screen for another video about telling family Dad, stories. When should we send it up? No. Should we send it up tomorrow?